in our work. This work we came two years ago is challenging work. And in our zeal to work, in our commitment to work, probably in one way or another we have wronged somebody. I want to say to so my brother, President William Ruto, if in our zeal to work, I have wronged you. Please find it in your heart to forgive me. I want to say, if my spouse in our duties for the boy child and our program has wronged you in a way, find it in your heart to forgive her. <clears throat> to our members of parliament, if in the course of duty, through our utterances and actions, we have in one way or another upset you, all wronged you, find it in your heart to forgive me. <clears throat> if our brothers who did not support the president and myself in the way my region and the Rift Valley supported him. And probably you find that in appreciating our people and the support they give the president and I, probably our utterances made you feel uncomfortable. We did not mean bad. We were simply appreciating the people who voted for us. And if you feel that we rubbed you the wrong way, please find it in your heart to forgive me. <clears throat> to the people of Kenya, in our service across the country, as we serve you, if there is anything we have done or said that you found unpalatable, that you found unacceptable, please find it in your heart to forgive me. <laughs> My first adults and the children, I want to apologize as a politician that your names are everywhere for no reason. Your privacy has been defiled. As I fight my political battles, I want to apologize. But there's nothing you can do because you got married to a politician. <laughs> I'm very pained. That my late brother, Governor Drito Gashagwa, a good man, a man who worked very hard for his family, who died eight years ago, his will that he made in privacy is in every newspaper. His properties that he worked so hard to live for his family are everywhere in the newspaper. I wish those who pursue me could just pursue me and allow my little brother to rest in peace. That I feel. And therefore, good people, thank you very much for your prayers, and God will see us through. Amen. Uh, Amen. These things that are happening 
are things that we have seen before. And uh, during those very difficult moments that we had with President William Ruto, everything was against him. The state machinery, the deep state, public resources, and no manner of weapons and arsenal. But he had God on his side. Amen. I am very persuaded, very persuaded, that um, God, the Almighty, that saw through President William Ruto in very difficult circumstances has gone nowhere. That God is still present. He is on the throne. He is merciful. And his might is not in question. I want to call upon the people of Kenya to remain peaceful, to love one another. And despite all these happenings, irrespective of the outcome, the people of Kenya must remain peaceful and united and love one another. Specifically, I want to appeal to our brothers and sisters in the Rift Valley, where there are many communities who live there, to leave this contest to lead us. Our people must stay together. They must continue loving one another. They must continue marrying and getting children. They must continue doing business together. And they must always seek for peace and peaceful coexistence. We've enjoyed a lot of peace in this country. And the politics of the day should not in any way threaten our peace and our peaceful coexistence. Kenya is bigger than all of us. We have no other country other than this one. Good people, thank you very much for your prayers. And God will see us through. Amen. Um, I have no doubt in my mind. I have no doubt in my mind. And I want to encourage our office staff not to feel discouraged. Let's just continue working because we have a duty to serve the people of Kenya equally with competence, with commitment, because we owe it to the people of Kenya. I want to say that Kenya is a country of the rule of law. I have faith in our courts of law. We have competent men and women in our judiciary who I believe will uphold the Constitution, protect it with their zeal, and always uphold and protect the will of the Kenyan people. Article 1 of the Constitution says the sovereignty of this country rests with the people. And the institutions like Parliament and Senate exercise that power as a matter of delegation so that we have a good country of rule of law as opposed to the state of nature. I appeal to all our independent institutions to uphold the rule of law and remain true to the Constitution so that we don't get in situations where we can have a country that feels that the rule of the jungle is in application. So far, it is my observation that we have a very patriotic judiciary, a judiciary 
that upholds the rule of law and the Constitution and always upholds the supremacy of our Constitution. And I believe that Kenya will be a country of the rule of law. Apart from what the Constitution provides, we are a God-fearing nation and we will equally defend our faith as Christians, as, religio as, as, as different religions, we will make sure that we, are, we protect the freedom of worship in Kenya. And I want to ask those who have ideas to allow religious leaders themselves to develop how they want to regulate themselves and how the church how religious organizations are going to go forward because that was the recommendation of the task force I appointed under Reverend Mutaba Mushimi that the religious body in Kenya will decide how they want to make sure that the freedom of worship in Kenya is protected. And I want to give assurance to the church and to the religious institutions in Kenya that we will defend the right and the freedom of worship in Kenya, and it will not be compromised in whatsoever manner. This morning, I thank God for our great country, Kenya, and uh, the many things God has done for us, the blessing of the rains, the blessing of our farmers, and the many things God has done for us so that we can be able to feed our nation and many other things that God has done for us, the peace in our nation, the tranquility in our nation. I want to thank God for Kenya. And I want to um, say to all of us, as we have been told this morning, it is good for all of us to know the purposes of God in our lives so that we can pursue and we can accomplish what God has planned for each and every one of us. Um, in everything that we do, in business, in service, in leadership, that we may seek to know God's will and to pursue and attain and to ask God to help us to achieve that which is in his perfect design and destiny. Let me also say that this morning, I want to uh, tell the church that as government, we respect our constitution. The preamble of the constitution of Kenya says God of all creation. That is the beginning of the Constitution of Kenya, meaning that we surrender to God. And that is why Kenya shall continue to be a God-fearing nation. And we will defend the freedom of worship in our republic. We will make sure that we don't compromise and there will be no limitations or compromise on the freedom of worship in Kenya. I know that there are proposals that have been made in some quarters about regulation of the church, regulation of worship, regulation of religious activities. I want to remind those who are pursuing that kind of exercise that the constitution of Kenya is very explicit on the freedom of worship. And there will be no compromise whatsoever. There will be no limitation whatsoever on the freedom of worship in Kenya.